Hey everybody, welcome back to FRM 120. We're going to continue our journey through the electrical side of our brewing operation. Uh, how we turn these motors on, these pumps on, uh, how we fire these heating elements, uh, whether they're in the boil kettles or whether they're in the boilers themselves, uh, mash tons, uh, hot liquor tanks, whatever the case may be. We have to have electricity in most cases uh, in order to create and generate this heat that's needed or this pump motion that allows us to transfer liquids. So we're going to keep moving along here and in lesson four we're going to discuss controls and control logic. You probably don't know what I'm specifically speaking of when I talk about these two terms but by the end of this lecture you will. So hang on for the ride. So here we go. So what we know so far is that with motor controls we have discussed the manual motor starter and that's one of the simplest ways to control a motor uh, that we simply take the three-phase voltage in, we press our start button and through a series of normally open contacts our voltage then transfers out of the um, motor starter or the manual motor starter through its overload block and onto the motor. Here's a diagram of what we were looking at. Here's the three normally open contacts that are, in, that are housed in that manual motor starter. We press the start button, these contacts simultaneously close, and then the three-phase voltage goes to our motor and makes it run, okay? So, um, what if uh, a manual motor starter is not uh, very practical, you might say, okay? Well, we've got a solution for that, and we're going to be using the magnetic motor starter. And this system, uh, the, ma the, manual motor the magnetic motor starter, allows us to start stop, jog, reverse, and also run the motor in its normal capacity. But in order to be able to do any of these functions, we've got to have a series of different components, okay? So we're going to, we're going to discuss these components one by one, okay? And we're going to then go into detail with each one of them. First of all, we've got to have our high voltage, which is be our 208 volts or our uh, 240, our 277, 480, whatever the facility has coming in as its primary three-phase voltage coming in from our utilities, okay? And we call that our primary voltage, that is our high voltage, okay? And then we're going to discuss uh, control transformers and its function in the uh, motor control circuit, okay? Then we're going to talk about the secondary side as opposed to the primary side. We're talking about the secondary side, which is our low, or con uh, low voltage or our control voltage or secondary voltage, okay? Got a lot of inter, um, mixing terms, but you'll see where they all mean the same thing and they can be used interchangeably, okay? We're also going to talk about the, the role of input devices in our uh, control circuit and those things are like switches and um, push buttons and things that make our uh, motors come on eventually. They're usually human interaction most of the time, but uh, we consider these uh, inter, uh, input devices and then we're going to have output devices also and these are known as loads. Of course we always talk about in our control circuit here uh, how we have to have a load. We, come, we have a power, we have power going through our conductors and a load in order to convert that, um, uh, that uh, current flow into some, some, some form of work. In the primary side or the high, the high voltage side we're converting that uh, electron flow into work through the, through the motor to rotation, or the heating elements heating up. Well, the same thing's gonna happen here on the, um, with output devices on the control side, okay? So I've thrown a lot of terms here at you uh, and that we're gonna break down uh, one by one, but the first one I wanna really talk about is control transformer, okay? Because we've already covered the high voltage part. We sort of know that, how it works. We even know where the, the uh, three-phase voltage comes from. Okay, so, and if you remember, I told you I was going to teach you anything that you didn't need to know. I think you're now seeing that uh, those, I, I'm, I'm telling the truth, it's all kind of coming full circle, and it's going to come even more full circle uh, as we continue to delve into the control side. Okay, but first I want to talk about the control transformer, because that's a very, very critical part. Remember, uh, when we were um, using the manual motor starter, our control was our finger. We stopped and started with the push button, okay? And like I said, that's not always real practical. So what we have to do is incorporate a control circuit, but before we can do that, we have to provide control voltage, okay? Now these are some examples of control transformers. They come in all different shapes and sizes and forms. Um, I've got a couple here uh, just to show you in front of the camera. Um, here's a encased uh, control transformer, okay? Primary voltage hooks to here, secondary voltage comes out to here. Don't worry about that. We're gonna get uh, knee deep into this stuff. You're gonna understand it. Here's one that's open, 
air kind of thing. It's not got a, it's not encased, but it does the exact, uh, the exact same thing. It's got a primary and secondary winding that we're going to discuss. But you know, they come in all different shapes and sizes. Uh, for those of you who probably think, well, I've never seen one or I don't have access to one of them, um, there is uh, in your home if you've got a doorbell. Okay. Um, you have a doorbell that has a, a, a voltage coming, a higher voltage coming in there, and it steps the voltage down to a lower, safer voltage, which is what a control transformer does. But these are just some uh, pictorial examples of what the different types of transformers look like. Okay, and the purpose of these control transformers is to step down the voltage, uh, voltages to uh, a lower and safer level. In other words, we're going to step it down from that 208, 240, 277. You know, 480, whatever it is that, that's coming in to the facility, we're going to step it down to a lower, safer voltage that we're going to use in our control circuit because we're going to be interacting uh, with our fingers uh, with these control devices, and it's always safer to have a lower voltage to do so. Okay, so but we're going to step these voltages down to safer levels, particularly where humor, human interaction with the control circuit, such as our push buttons and our uh, stop buttons and things like that are, are uh, wired into our circuits, okay? So just some more uh, pictures here for you, step down and we decrease the voltage and they're used in control circuit. Here's some examples of the push buttons, here's some of the little pilot lights that are used in our control circuit, uh, as, as I showed you a, a picture there. Um, and this is a picture of a small uh, a, a transformer that would be used in your home for your doorbell or possibly your HVAC systems um, thermostat. Okay, uh, we're going to continue to work the, our way through this, so don't you know? Uh, we'll, we'll have more examples, and I'll explain them. But as always, we have a symbol that we have to recognize in our drawing. Okay, so this is the symbol for a step-down transformer. Okay, and uh, I know this is a step-down transformer, and you will later. It, because I've got more turns of wire on this side of the transformer than I do on this side. Now these are not the literal number of turns on that transformer, uh, but just it depicts more turns on one side as opposed to the other, and this is the iron core. Now, uh, we're going to break this a little bit further. We know that uh, everything above here running our motor, we call that our power circuit. Okay and it's got our three phase voltage, our high voltage. Everything down here that we use to control, uh, like such as stop buttons, start buttons, and things like that, that is our control circuit. So it's divided in between two sections. There is the power section and the control section. And we have been manually putting power in our power section from our three phase to our motor with our manual motor starter, okay? But this is now the control circuit. So you got power circuit, control circuit, and in between is the transformer itself. You'll notice this is a symbol uh, for a transformer. Now this is a step down transformer, but it doesn't represent the, the number of turns uh, stepping uh, from one uh, side to the other. They look identical. Uh, sometimes you'll run into that, but just know that this is a transformer and it usually um, specifies the incoming voltage versus the outcoming, okay? But the transformer has a primary coil, okay? It has a secondary coil. These are terms that you're going to want to know, and we'll define them a little later. But it's a secondary coil, and it also has an iron core in that transformer. Okay. Now, here's just some more some symbols here. Uh, again, here's some that are uh, that have the same number of coils depicted on each side, the primary and the secondary, and a few more uh, turns on here than secondary, and again, the one like I showed you earlier. Now. Uh, what I want to do is, is talk through each one of these sides, okay? Now, this is a cutaway version of a real transformer, okay? Cut it right down the middle here, okay? And here are your primary windings. Here are your secondary windings. And this is a laminated iron core. Now, let's go back to some of the things that we talked about when we talked about power generation and motors and alternators and things like that. We know, I want to make sure I don't get ahead of myself, but we know that when we take a coil of wire, okay, and this is what this is, it's representing a coil of wire, I like to use this one, okay, shows the turns real good. A coil of wire, as we've gone over this a hundred times, is simply one piece of wire wrapped around and around and around the circle, or usually around a piece of iron, okay, uh, and it's all, in fact it's always wrapped around a piece of iron in some way, um, and you have a beginning and an end, and you put a voltage on there 
and it creates a magnetic field. Okay, we've demonstrated that a little bit in the lab, uh, and you've probably known that to begin with, but we showed, we showed that in the, in the alternators and, and the, uh, the motors as well. When we apply voltage to a three-phase motor, we're putting it on the windings of the motor, and it creates a magnetic field that's wrapped around a, a piece of iron that attracts our rotor. Same exact principle. I told you before that about 90 to 95% of uh, anything to do with electricity is coils of wire wrapped around a piece of iron creates a magnetic field. Okay, this is just one more example of that. Okay, so uh, again, we're gonna uh, we're gonna take this primary winding. Okay, and that would be this one here depicted in this uh, just in this uh, symbol. And we're going to put a voltage on it. It's going to create a magnetic field, and that magnetic field is going to be uh, induced into this laminated iron core. This is sort of like the, um, the uh, poles in our motor, okay? But we're inducing this voltage, I mean, excuse me, this magnetic field into this laminated iron core. And then this is the secondary side of it, okay? And it's got, uh, it's got windings as well. And you're going to kind of wonder, okay, how does voltage get from one side to the other? That's where we're going next, okay? So I'm going to kind of break this down. And again, we're going to say that this is our primary side. Wraps, uh, this one piece of wire wrapped around this iron core, okay? That's just what this is, okay? We cut it in half, but it's wrapped around this iron core right here. And we're going to apply 240 volts uh, from our three-phase side. Now, we are not putting three phases of voltage on this because you only have two points of connection for this one piece of wire at the beginning and the end. We can only use two phases of our three-phase. However, that's known as single phase. You're thinking, wait a minute, Mike, uh, that's two phases. That should be, uh, be double-phase or something like that. No, when it's, when it's three, phase, three different phases used, like our motor uh, running, that's three phase. If we're using two or just one leg of the three phase, we're still calling that single phase, okay? I don't know why, I didn't make it up. That's just the industry standard. So when the power coming into your home, it's got you know, two hot legs and a neutral, that's still single phase, okay? You do not have three phase coming into your home. You don't have two phase coming into your home. You have two phases, but it's still considered single phase. So moving right along from that, sorry about that. Uh, but anyway, you got uh, 240 volts um, and two legs of our uh, three phase coming in here and it's wrapping around this iron core. This is that laminated iron core that I showed you earlier. And when we put an alternating current on there, we are inducing a magnetic field into the iron core, just like we did with the motors, okay? So we're inducing this, um, this magnetic field into the core and this magnetic field travels back and forth through this magnetic core. Well, on the other side of it, we've taken another single piece of wire, wrapped it around. It's kind of specialized wire, too. I'll show you in just a sec. But we have wrapped another piece of wire uh, around this and called it a coil as well. And that voltage is induced into this other piece of wire, and this coil, excuse me, and we wind up with a stepped down voltage coming out of our secondary. Now this is just the very basic premise of it. We're gonna get a little bit further in here in just a second, but what I want you to see in this particular slide is that we're putting voltage into the coil of wire, it's inducing a magnetic field into the iron core, and then a, a voltage comes out of the secondary. And there's not magic behind this, we're gonna explain it, okay? So in this graphic, what we're doing here, this is where we're gonna to to get a little bit deeper. We've got this 240 volts, and again, it could be whatever the primary voltage is coming into your building. But you're going to have 240 volts coming in on this coil of wire. Now, if you remember, AC voltage switches directions or cycles, uh, cycles 60 times a second. In other words, it peaks at positive, goes to the neutral plane, and back to the negative, and back to the neutral plane 60 times a second. It's also reversing directions 60 times a second. This is where it reverses, goes positive, and reverses and goes negative. Okay, it's doing that 60 times a second. It's doing the exact same thing in this conductor, in this coil of wire that we have wrapped around our iron core. And when we do that, that means our induced magnetic field that I was talking about earlier is also changing direction. So our magnetic field is going back and forth, back and forth like this, building and collapsing building and collapsing. Remember that, okay? So we are building, we're, we're creating a magnetic field that's changing directions 60 times a second. Now, 
as it comes through here and goes back through here like this, okay, it's doing that, it's doing that exact same thing inside this iron core. We go and wrap ourselves another conductor around here, and now we have a, we've kind of got a, the wire in, uh, wrapped around that iron core, and the magnetic field is traveling through the through the center of that coil of wire. It's being subjected to this building and collapsing, building and collapsing phenomenon that's going on in our magnetic field in our uh, core. So as this building and collapsing is going on inside that core, uh, inside that coil, excuse me, um, it, that's where we wind up with an induced voltage. It induces a voltage in our secondary, okay? So it's that, it's that whole going back and forth, peaking and, and, uh, from one side to the other and reversing that magnetic field inside this coil that creates this phenomenon of inducing another voltage uh, coming out of our secondary. Now, here's the cool thing about this, this transformer. This is what I just, I just find fascinating. These coils are not wired together in any way, shape, or form. And by the way, transformers are not new technology. They've been around for like, I don't know, for like almost, almost around the turn of the century. So, or the 1900s, I should say. So, these coils are not wired together. So, the way that the voltage is getting from here to here is known as mutual induction. Okay? In other words, they are not wired together in any way. It's that, that uh, magnetic field that's, that's back and forth. Uh, reversing 60 times a second inside this iron core uh, is setting up that building collapsing that our, our coil, secondary coil is wrapped around that causes a voltage to come out. So this is known as mutual induction. We're inducing the magnetic field here and we're inducing the voltage into the secondary coil. So you got two inductions, mutual induction, okay? And so, uh, and again, we do this with AC voltage, but we don't do this with DC, and you never want to hook DC voltage to your transformer uh, because you, the DC voltage does, is, has the straight line uh, current flow. It flows in one direction only. It does not reverse. Uh, so this graphic does not depict a DC voltage. I just left this up here. But what I'm trying to say is that if we put 240 volts of DC voltage on here, we would not get that building and collapsing. We would get straight magnetic field, a straight magnetic field moving in one direction, and it would not induce, it would not have that building collapsing phenomenon inside our secondary coil, so therefore it would not induce a voltage. So bottom line of what I'm trying to say here this slide is that you cannot get uh, a, a make a step down transformer with DC voltage like you would with AC, okay? So um, we won't get that secondary voltage. That's the kind of the, the main message I want to hear get you for this slide. Now, I will say that if you put uh, DC voltage on this iron core, you're going to wind up with a heck of a magnet. It's going to be a really strong magnet. And a, a, magnet, a magnetic field with DC is much stronger than AC. Uh, I think we demonstrated that in one of the labs that we've had already. But uh, it, it makes a very strong magnet, okay? As you can see, this right here, this crane picking up this stuff, the scrap and salvage out of this yard with a DC magnet. Um, so there was one other thing I was going to tell you about this, but well, I'll probably remember it here in just a minute. But anyway, so now just want, just diving just a little bit deeper on transformers, okay? So you should by now see that we've taken this high voltage, we have stepped it down with our control transformer from the primary side to a lower voltage coming out of the secondary side, okay? Now let me just show you real quick with the one I showed you earlier. This is the primary side of our, our transformer, okay? We'll hook our wires to here. We'll get very specific later, but we'll hook our wires to the primary side. This is our iron core. It's wrapped around this iron core, okay? That's where the magnetic field that's going to be going back and forth is, is being induced. And then here's the secondary. This is the coil wrapped, to, the other coil wrapped around on the other side of it. And this is where our secondary voltage or our stepped down voltage uh, our safer voltage is coming out. Okay, just a little visual there for you. And so this is one more one more uh, principle that you kind of need to understand when it comes to step down transformers. And our control transformers are always step down. Okay, they do make such things as step up transformers. You use those in furnaces when you want to ignite a spark plug that lights off your furnace uh, at home or in the coil of your vehicle. You take the 12 volts and you put it on a, a step-up transformer, which is your ignition coil, and it takes it from 12 volts to 100 to 150,000 volts, okay, that fires the spark plug so that it can ignite the fuel in your, in your car. 
So that is a step up transformer. And they are, so they actually use those. And also, we talked about step up transformers. We take the power coming out of the power plant, we step it up to a much higher voltage, and the reason being is because when the voltage goes up, the current goes down. Remember all that? Okay. So they have a step up transformer uh, going, leaving the power plant as it travels miles and miles and miles across the countryside and on these, on these uh, utility towers and poles. Then when it gets to your house, we're going to step it down. We don't really consider those transformers near your house a control transformer, but it is a step-down transformer because you take that 7,700 volts or maybe 13,800 volts and you step it down to 240 that goes into your house. So that is a step-down transformer. Okay, uh, But the principle behind this is you're going to take um, a lot more turns of wire rotated or you know, wrapped around your iron core of smaller wire. Okay? And I'm going to, you're going to see why in just a second. So we're going to have one of these aha moments for you. So you take smaller wire and you have more turns wrapped around the, the, this part of your iron core. That's on the primary side. On the secondary side, to get it to step down, we take fewer turns. Okay? And the wire is going to be larger. Okay, if you remember, I showed you that cutaway it had primary, had, sm had more, t few, uh, more turns, smaller wire. And on the secondary, it had fewer turns, bigger wire. Okay? So that, that's, that's one of the big things you've got to remember here. So why is that? Why do we have different, uh, we know why we have different wire turns, number of turns on the primary and secondary, because we, we, uh, we take a, high, uh, a higher voltage and stronger magnetic field, and then we step down and we lessen that magnetic field coming out of the second one. And you do that by having fewer turns. Now, the difference in the wire sizes, okay? Back it up for a second. Transformers are rated in volt amps or kilovolt amps. Volt amps or KVA, okay? So, in KVA, or with your KVA or your VA, that, that's the same thing as power. If you remember our power formula, volts times amps equals power, okay? Uh, volts times uh, kilovolts times amps is also uh, power as well, but this is the formula: volts times amps. Sort of should remind you of something. Okay, input power is the same as on, on the uh, primary side as it is on the outside on the output side. Okay, so if I've got a transformer that's rated at 4,800 uh, volt amps, on, okay, that means that we're going to have 48 volt. Uh, we're going to have 4,800 uh, volt amps on the primary side, and we're going to have 4,800 volts amps uh, on the secondary side. Okay, starting to come together. That should be an aha moment, aha moment for you. Okay, this shouldn't be. Okay, you remember these guys? I'd be surprised. Look, about half of you guys probably remember what this is. Man, that's back in the day. So anyway, let's take a look at this and do the math. Okay, to show you, I'm going to prove this to you. Okay, so. We have a transformer that's rated at 2,400 volt amps. Okay. Well, in our example so far, all we've ever used, all we use is we're sticking with 240 volts AC. Okay. So, 2,400 volt amps, volts times amps. We divide it by the volts. We come up with the amps. Simple math. Okay. So we got 10 amps. Now, if we oh, that's going on the primary side. Remember, we're going to step our uh, our uh, secondary voltage down, and you can do it by four, by four, by half. You know, different turns ratios will give you a different output. But in this one, we're looking at a two to one ratio, two times the uh, primary voltage as there is to the secondary. We call that a two to one ratio. So we're stepping our voltage down by half. Okay, but we're still a 2,400 volt amp transformer. So we said that both sides uh, have 2,400. Uh, 2400 volt amp uh, capacity. So that means that our amperage when we divide 2400 by uh, 120 is now going to be 20 amps. Okay? So as you can see, with voltage and amperage being inversely proportional, like we talked about with power formula, okay, same thing applies with the transformer going from one side to side. Okay? Now, I have this other transformer. And I can look at this, and I hope you can see this. I'm going to try to get it close enough. I can tell you which one is the primary side versus the secondary side just by looking at it. And number one, more turns of wire on the primary side than there are on the secondary side. But to prove our power uh, formula, 
uh, in theory, you'll notice that this is the finer wire, this is smaller wire. Why? Because we're, we've got um, higher voltage coming into our primary and the current is not nearly as much uh, on the primary as it is on the secondary. We look down on the secondary side, we have fewer turns because we're stepping it down. We don't want as many turns on the uh, secondary as the primary, otherwise we won't have that uh, step down effect, okay? We'd be having like a one to one. So we're, we're gonna step it down with fewer turns and we have bigger wire because we're gonna be carrying more current on the secondary side, 20 amps as opposed to 10 amps. And again, this is theoretical, this is just numbers that, to prove this, but it's still the same. It really is the same, it does work, uh, work out the same. But you'll see the primary side versus the secondary side, more turns of finer wire, fewer turns of heavier wire because our heavier, our secondary has to carry more current. That's just uh, by the nature of the uh, power <coughs> formula that we know, okay? so. That kind of plays this out. Just a couple of things, just to re recap real quick on this part. More turns on the primary, smaller wire, fewer turns, it helps step it down. And when we step down that voltage, our current goes up, so we've got to have heavier wire going on that side. Okay? So again, volts up, uh, volts down equals amps up, and voltage up equals amperage down. So they're inversely proportional. Okay? So, very quickly, um, I want to tell you how a transformer can fail. Okay, there's three different ways. Number one, you can have an open uh, in the primary or the secondary coil. In other words, the primary or the secondary coil could have an open, meaning that uh, you have a beginning and an end on this primary side, okay, beginning and end. If it doesn't go all the way through and there's a break in the circuit, if there's a break in this wire somewhere, we consider that an open. It can happen on the primary side. You could have a wire burning two somewhere in this long wrap of coil, of the coil right here. It could break in two, or burn in two, I should say, uh, and you wind up with an open circuit. So that's what we're talking about when we say there's an open um, in the primary or the secondary. If you burn right there or, or burn in two right there. That's one way that a transformer can fail, okay? A second way is that the primary and the secondary can get shorted together. Now, this graphic doesn't really show how close these coils are really together. I'm gonna quickly run back through here and show you physically, um, here we go. You'll see this is the, sec the primary, and I don't know if you can see this very well on the screen, but this is the secondary, and there is a thin insulating sam uh, sandwich between these two coils. Over time, if you remember the building and collapsing, okay, that's a vibration, and that causes, you'll hear transformers hum sometimes, and that humming is vibration, and vibration is movement, okay, it's oscillation of a, of a, of a, a, a solid material, okay, and so it's moving back and forth, it will eventually through heat and time wear where the insulation uh, will wear into, possibly wear that sandwich material out, and these two come in contact with each other. Uh, and that, that is what we call, consider shorting between the primary and the secondary. Okay, now let me talk to you very quickly about this uh, wire in the transformer. Uh, and the reason I'm showing it is because I just happen to have it here. Um, this looks like bare copper wire. Um, it is copper wire, but it's not bare. It looks like it is, but it's not. It has a, a very thin, uh, clear, uh, almost laminate um, type of uh, uh, insulation on it, and it, it's, uh, it's, it's like I said, it's clear, it's not bare. So that's why you saw that picture of the cutaway. That's why the primary is not shorting out it's itself together because these windings here, these, these wraps here are insulated. So if they come in contact with each other here, they're insulated unless over time that insulation wears out and then you wind up with uh, an open, I mean, excuse me, a, 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 a damaged insulation, you become shorted, okay? But these two can possibly become shorted together uh, over time, okay? Or the third way it can fail is the primary and or the secondary can short to the core. So if you remember, um, this is a piece of iron that, that has insulation wrapped around it over time with heat and vibration that uh, insulation can wear and the primary could come in contact, the, the actual conductor that's carrying the, the uh, current uh, could come in contact with our iron core, all right, and short to the core itself. The same thing could happen on the secondary. After time, the insulation wears off and our voltage that's being induced into the secondary, 
uh, winds up getting uh, shorting to the iron core. So it could possibly short to the core as well. But those are the three ways that a transformer can fail. Now, fun fact going down the road, I want you to think I'm going to, I'm going to get in your head, okay? So when you're going down the road, try not to think about this, okay? As you go down the road, you see, you've seen these things all your life. Looking up there on the pole, and there are these things up there. You know, they've got something to do with power. Some people even think it's got something to do with the telephone and internet lines coming through. Not so. Um, th these are transformers mounted on a utility pole. You see them all over the place. Now, some of them, some of the transformers will be, they're starting to go more toward the ground. You know, they're mounted on the ground about, I don't know, two feet, three feet high. And they have the tr same primary, secondary, and core inside there that feeds the high voltage coming across these utility lines that feed down into your home at a lower voltage. But that's what this is doing is these, uh, these are the high tension lines. These are the, the, uh, the uh, very high voltage going into the primary side of our transformer. Now this is three different transformers because they're going to distribute it in three different directions. Okay, so uh, and <clears throat> they're going to all share the load of, of wherever they're located at. But you got primary voltage going in, and you have a secondary voltage coming out going down to your house. But this is what the, the primary and the secondary coil and the iron core are all in here. Now these are encased in oil. The oil helps keep them cool uh, because they're under a lot more load and than our transformers uh, that we're talking about in control circuit. But this is where I want to take a quick break, absorb all this, think about what we've talked about, review it, and if you've got any questions, get a hold of me. We're going to take a break right now and then uh, kind of let you desaturate. Um, and then I'm going to come back and we're going to finish out the, the rest of that control section side of, of our circuits. Okay? So for right now, shut this down, uh, take yourself a break, and be sure to come back for the second part because we're going to pick up right where we left off and keep on moving. Thanks a lot for watching, and we will talk to you soon.